Okay, so it is winter now, but it's not, but it just snowed like five inches, and we just had an occurrence regarding the power walls, and we kind of want to talk about it because it's probably our number one gripe. But first, we kind of want to give you a little backstory in case you're new here about our power walls, our solar system, everything that we've done because we've actually done quite a bit. Basically, back in July of last year, 2018, we got our solar system installed. It was 16.575 kilowatts, which was 51 panels. Big system. Big system. A lot bigger than most people would need. Yes, but we needed a big system because we have four Teslas, and we are trying to cover as much of our household usage and car usage as possible. So we got those installed back in July, but then we had to wait up to eight weeks for our utility company to do the official turn on and then reinstall the meters. And basically our utility company took seven weeks, six days, 23 hours and 45 minutes. Before basically they, the last second. They showed up within like the last 15 minutes to install <laughs> our meters. And so basically we got those installed at the end of September of last year and turned our system on and we have been producing solar ever since. Yeah. And we've had some really great days over 120 kilowatt hours on some days. And we've had some days when we had snow for a couple days in a row and we've gotten zero kilowatts. Yeah. But the nice thing is, is the way that we are signed up with our utility company is all of the excess that we produce through the, the day goes back to the grid and gives us a credit. So when we have those really good days in the summer or the spring or the fall, we get credits on those at the rate in which they're earned. And we're actually on the time of use plan. So we, there's actually like three different tiers, like between 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. is like the most expensive tier or tier one, I believe they call it. Peak period. Peak period. And then there's a shoulder on each one of those. And then throughout the night, 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. is actually our cheapest rate. And that's actually the time when we normally charge our cars. So by using the time of use plan with our power walls, we are able to generate as much power as possible and send it all back to the grid during that peak period and also during the partial peak period. And then we do charge our power walls up in the morning and then we use that to power the house and perhaps some, you know a little bit of the car charging later on at the end of the day. So luckily we're able to kind of utilize that grid since we're on time of use to actually like almost like store energy for us. It's not quite like that, but it's a good way to look at it is we're putting it back on at like the peak rates and we're then able to draw it off at like the cheaper rates. So we really actually get a lot more for our, our money or bigger bang for our buck being able to do that. And it's actually yielded some very, very impressive results. And we actually are gonna have another video kind of on the solar coming up. But I would stay tuned for that because it, the numbers don't lie. Yeah, they simply don't. So like Eric said, we can kind of use the grid as a battery, mm -hmm. as a kind of like a power wall, but the power walls give us an added benefit in that if the power goes down on the grid, such as when we have a blizzard, our power walls can still power the house and we can keep running along everything. We can charge our cars, we can power every single item in the house that's electric, no problem. No problem. Unless of a situation. We do have one um, problem we have experienced. One problem though we did get fixed right away. Uh, back in March, yeah. I think it was March 13th or so, it was like the day before the Model Y event out mm -hmm. in California, we had a problem where we had a, a big blizzard. I, yeah. And basically the power went out right away and unfortunately uh, we did not have Stormwatch enabled. It, it never activated for our power walls yet. And so I had seen the forecast, and so I manually set it to store 50% of our power walls in, in reserve. And since we have three power walls, that's about 40 kilowatt hours. So, yeah. so I set it to, to reserve 50%, which would be about 20 kilowatt hours in reserve. And I figured that should last us for you know 24 hours. And the longest outage we've ever had in like the 20 something years I've lived in this town was like four hours. And that was back in 2003 when we got four feet of snow. And this blizzard, we got less than a foot of snow, but we ended up having a power outage for nearly 48 hours. Yeah, I'll put the screenshot up, but it, it was crazy long. So as David was saying, originally we didn't have Stormwatch, so we kind of went in there preemptively and made the reserve at 50%, thinking something could potentially happen, but we also knew that with the snow coming in, it'd probably block our solar panels for a day or two, so we wanted to have some extra juice. Again, based upon our usage, that should have lasted us about 24 hours yeah. with that 50%. We didn't get Stormwatch, and then the power went out. So we actually tweeted Elon and was like, hey, why aren't we getting Stormwatch here in Colorado? Because we did have a uh, weather advisory or whatever it is here. There was definitely known it was coming, and that's what the Stormwatch should be 
hitting off of. So Elon actually tweeted back and said, we'll look into it. Basically, Elon found out that they had Stormwatch set to be enabled if you had high wind warning. Yeah. But for some reason, they didn't have a blizzard set to enable it. And yep. it, for those of you who don't know what a blizzard is, it's basically high winds and a lot of snow. A lot of snow. And so it, it didn't make sense not to have Stormwatch. So we tweeted to Elon, yep. and within a few hours, he replied back saying, you're right, it's not good enough. So Elon said they went in and adjusted the sensitivity settings. And actually then we, Scott and I, <laughs> flew out to Model Y event. When they made the change though, people who still had power from the grid, their batteries instantly started charging because Stormwatch was now enabled. Unfortunately, yep. it was too late for us. The grid was still down. It had been, you know, however many hours, but it was too late for us. But for all the other people in the metro area who had power, it was a lifesaver for them because it, it let their batteries recharge yeah. from the grid. So for those of you that don't know, Stormwatch is the only way, if you have solar, to be able to charge from the grid for your power walls. Normally, if you have solar, at least where we are with our electric company and everything, you cannot charge your power walls from the grid. You have to be able yeah. to charge them from solar. Stormwatch is the only thing that can override that so that way you can have some reserve power. So not having that enabled meant we couldn't top these up ahead of time. In some countries such as Australia and I believe the UK, you can hook up your power walls and they can charge from the grid. Even with solar? Even with solar. There you go. I guess the US or at it's least our electric company. And also with how the tax credits and stuff, yeah. there's something called the ITC, but there's also uh, uh, credits in California, which uh, they have to power their house. They can't send the power back to the grid. And so basically there's all these restrictions and yeah. they just kind of apply the entire rules to the entire United States. And so that's why we're not able to charge our batteries from the grid, except for when Stormwatch is enabled. So basically with that 24 hours, the 50% charge that we had on our three power walls, we were able to power our house t over 24 hours straight yeah. with no power from the grid. Yeah. But kind of like the outcome of all that was we recently had a storm come through and Stormwatch came on automatically. Automatically. Saw it in the app. It actually throws up an alert and notification and says Stormwatch is enabled. And when Stormwatch does that, it doesn't allow you to draw from the batteries. That way you have those in case you need them, a reserve if you will. Um, so it was great to see that Elon's tweet about sensitivity settings and everything actually came through and it worked great. Stormwatch worked perfectly and, and we did have the option if we wanted to, we could turn Stormwatch back off if right. we don't want to charge the batteries for some reason or if we wanted to power the house with the batteries before the storm or during the storm, but we went ahead and left it enabled and it stayed yeah. charged, uh, I believe for like two days, two or three days, because yep. we had a long snowstorm. And, and fortunately with that one, of course, the power didn't go out, but we were ready for that one because we had 100% and we could have we gone ready. over 48 hours or, or longer with our batteries and, yeah. and solar once the storm stopped. Yeah, and, and the other nice thing too is we don't necessarily use all the range on all our cars every single day. So if we need to, we just don't plug in for a day. Like if we didn't have power, we just wouldn't plug in and we'd still be able to get to and from work for easily. probably a week or I so. Could prob we, I could probably go two weeks easily. So yeah. it, it, something to just keep in mind. So basically we did still have one, at least one complaint that we have about the power walls. And that is that there's no integration between the cars charging and the power walls powering the house. Yeah. And there's different ways you can set up your power walls. You can make it so your wall connectors or your mobile connectors are not backed up by the power walls. But if that happens, if you have it set up that way, then you're only left with lower amperage uh, outlets yeah. and it would take forever to charge your car. So we chose to back up the entire house, including all of our high power wall connectors. Yeah, literally everything. everything. The garage, the appliances, everything in this house works as normal if the power is out because of these. So that's the good news. The bad news is, since there's no communication between the cars and the power walls, that if the power does go off in the middle of the night, and we don't know because everything continues to run perfectly normal, then we have a problem where Scott started charging his car in the middle of the night. You can use scheduled charging. He said it yep. just charged early last night, about 3 a.m. And unfortunately, when he did that, it drained off our power walls very quickly. Yeah. and uh, we had, I believe, 25-30% left in our power walls, which yeah. would be, uh, I think it was about 12 to 13 kilowatt hours saved up. And again, we weren't expecting a big storm or for the power to go out, but it did. And with that combination of power going out, 
and powering the house via the power wall starting at about 1 or 2 a.m. Yeah. Then when Scott's car came on at 3 a.m., it drained the batteries. Then we no longer had any power for the rest of the house. Yeah. And I know that there's no like circuitry or whatever in there that to enable the cars to talk directly to the power walls or vice versa, but it would be quite easy via software. Yeah, like their API. Via their API, the, before a car charges, it could contact Tesla and say, okay, where am I receiving power? Are the power walls charged? And are the power walls receiving grid power? Mm -hmm. If so, I'll go ahead and charge my cars to their normal rate, their normal percentage. Yeah. If not, then maybe send a warning and ask for confirmation before continuing to charge the car. Because we much we have the cars that, again, can travel several days without charging. Yep. But once the power goes on in the house, we don't have any more power until the sun comes back and we clean off the solar panels. So yeah, I guess that's like the big takeaway. It would be amazing if there was some way for the cars and the power walls to communicate. So like some setting somewhere where is if we lose power, we can opt to override it somehow to still charge the cars if we want, but like have it mainly not charge the cars or have some settings to play around with it and, really. And it wouldn't take any additional hardware. The, the, yeah. the power walls can't see like individual appliances. Right. They, they could add little sensors, CT sensors to our wall connector outlets and they could see that, okay, the wall connectors are drawing power, but they don't even need that. No. All they need to see is, oh, we've only got 10 kilowatt hours saved up in the batteries, the grid is down, and I'm getting a request for 12 kilowatts of power to be pulled out. Mm -hmm. And they could be like, oh, I don't have enough to last very long in this. So they should be sending warnings or something. Yeah. And again, the car could check to see, I'm plugged in, this is my scheduled time, are the power walls currently powering the house? And if they are, mm -hmm. are they receiving grid power? Be yeah. If they're not receiving grid power, then please don't charge. Yeah. Or give us the option to say yeah. yes or no. It would be really nice. And yes, we did get a notification on our phone that the power was out from the power walls, but... 1.30 in the morning. I <laughs> actually have my phone turn the ringer off at certain hours because my phone blows up all night, too, with the companies I run having people overseas. So I don't turn my phone and make it so I hear those because I want to sleep. Yeah. Um, but it would be really nice to just have a setting where we can say if the grid is down... Don't charge the cars, yeah. but just charge the house exactly. or power the house. Exactly. Um, so that is like our biggest gripe. Otherwise, like we are absolutely in love with the power walls. Uh, they've been working out great. We actually are going to be getting a fourth one, Secrets Out. Um, so yeah, we absolutely love them. The solar has been working out great too. Yeah, we just kind of wanted to bring this to light. Hopefully Elon sees this, tweet it to him. Maybe comment on the tweet that I tweeted to them. Winter's pretty much over, hopefully, but... You know, but that gives them, like, six months to work on exactly, it. Exactly, but as um, long as they can have it by, like, next September or so. Exactly. So, yeah, definitely comment on my tweet, and let's see if we can get this to his attention and help really kind of, like, improve the integration between the cars and the power walls. Um, I don't think it would be that bad. I don't know their API that well, though, but let's leave that to them to decide. But yeah, that's basically it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe because we will be coming at you with a lot of solar videos, especially this summer. We have a lot planned. We have some in the queue. Uh, a lot of cool stuff coming with all that. So definitely subscribe if you haven't. As always though, huge thanks to our channel sponsor, Abstract Ocean. If you guys are looking to accessorize your Model S, X, or Model 3, definitely check them out. They have all kinds of cool things, screen protectors, different vinyl wraps for your center consoles, all kinds of really cool stuff that we actually utilize in every single one of our cars. And using code Tesla Inventory, all one word, will get you 15% off your first order. As always, though, thumbs up if you enjoyed that video. Let us know down below if you have solar, if you have power walls, what your experience has been. Solar recently got a lot cheaper, so definitely check out Tesla if you haven't. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it, though. Click here to subscribe, here for some other ones, and we'll see you guys in the next one.